If you're looking for a dish that's loaded with flavonoids, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, something that's very easy to make and also inexpensive, then I have that for you with my recipe, Texas Caviar. I'm Mary Ellen Autry. I'm a nutritionist and a diabetes educator at Austin Diagnostic Clinic. Right now, to start the recipe, I'm going to open my cans of beans and corn, and I'm going to put them into a large bowl. But I want to drain them first because I don't want the liquid in this recipe. So for this particular recipe, I am using salt-free. Once again, when you buy regular canned vegetables, they're going to be extremely high in salt. If at the end of this recipe you would like to add more salt in, you can to make it closer to your taste. Also considering increasing the amount of chili pepper you use in this recipe, garlic, onion, so that's going to give it added flavor. Now for this recipe, I do like to rinse this a little bit because I don't like the juices to be dark. So into my bowl, I will add the vegetables that I have drained, the corn, the black beans, the pinto beans, the black eyed peas. Then I'm going to add a small can of olives. The olives that I've added will give it a little bit different texture. It will also give it some flavor. And the oil from the olives will uh, help to lower the cholesterol. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop my peppers, my onions, and my garlic, and that's going to all go into this bowl. Peppers, like all the other vegetables that we've been using, are high in antioxidants, flavonoids, vitamins, minerals. They can be protective in regards to cancer. They can also end up lowering cholesterol levels. Peppers to this recipe are going to give you a lot of heat. And on the Scoville scale, I'm using a green pepper, which doesn't have a lot of heat, but then I'm going to end up using this pepper, which really is going to pack it with a lot of fire. This recipe is very versatile. You can end up using it as a side dish, or you can serve this recipe with uh, corn chips. It also works really well on baked potatoes. I'm going to cut this into pieces that I don't mind uh, eating whole. So since I like to get smaller pieces of onion, I'm going to try chopping this just a little bit finer than what I did my green pepper. How much onion you use in this particular recipe will be your own personal preference. If you find a whole onion is too strong, definitely do half an onion. You find that the white onion is too strong, do green onions. So now I'm going to chop up my jalapeno and put that into my bean mixture. The hot part of the jalapeno will be the seeds and will be the membranes. Depending on the amount of heat that you like, you can use from one to three of these. So now I'm going to chop my jalapeno into very, very tiny, small pieces. Garlic is a member of the lily family and is related to onions. So garlic in this recipe is going to give it some different flavor. And it's going to be the marriage of all of these flavors, the onions, the peppers, the garlic, the oregano, that's going to give it its distinctive flavor. And eating this like on top of chips is really nice when it's combined with the corn. So in this bowl right now, I have all of my canned vegetables, my corn, my beans. I have all of my peppers, my jalapeno and my green peppers. I have my onion and my garlic. The next step will be to do the sauce. In a small bowl, I am going to combine my vinegar, my olive oil, and my spices. So my first ingredient is going to be a fourth of a cup of olive oil. The next ingredient will be a third of a cup of vinegar. To this oil mixture, I'm going to add a tablespoon of oregano, a teaspoon of basil, a teaspoon of cumin, half of a tablespoon 
of black pepper. And the last ingredient will be my fourth of a teaspoon of thyme. That's how simple this dish is to make. And it is now complete and it is ready to serve. Mm -mm, good.